Showtime Sports presents From Brooklyn to the World with two-time world champion and Showtime boxing analyst, Paulie Malinaji. Paulie Malinaji, Peter Carth, Brooklyn to the World, Magic Hour, whatever you want to call us, we're back. My boy Jay Chaudhry, who's a, a producer, uh, does documentaries and uh, sports footage and uh, just stuff in general like this. He did a documentary on the Le- on LeGreco and Khan, which was uh, you know is done is done is done pretty well. They used uh, they used social media to, to attack Amir Khan to get him to do a fight with Phil LeGreco. Yeah, which, and it worked. It yeah, he worked got paid, but he got, he got, paid. Well, got well, the result too. speaks for itself. <laughs> but I mean, besides that, you know, got you know, the fight. Jay, Jay's work uh, helped to get the fight and whatnot. And uh, Break Media Group, Jay. You know, we know you did a, a great job with LeGreco and Khan. Yeah, I think you. I think pretty much w- without your work, I don't know if Phil would have got that fight. You know, uh, for sure. The build up to the fight and the uh, the fact that uh, Phil was able to do enough to get Amir's attention and then get the fight uh, a lot, a lot, a lot, a big part of thanks to your work. You know, tell us about how that that went, that came about and uh, uh, what the, what the best partnership in sports winner is. Yeah. Yeah, it's been um, it's certainly been a long time since Phil for sure, and it was only just three months ago we were we were at the Synopsis Media Sports Awards. Uh, we were actually in the same room as Showtime, Fox Sports, Bleacher Report, and the WWE, and it was really cool picking up our first industry award. We were actually one of the first few startups at the event, um, and yeah, we got the award for best partnership in sports with Phil LaGreco and the build up to the Amir Khan fight. Um, like I said, the fight didn't go as planned as a, or as we hoped but then again you know we're not responsible fighting for our athletes in the rings you know what i mean but of course of course um since then yeah we scaled from just um since april actually we just scaled from a couple of homegrown boxers from toronto to over 25 plus nfl superstars and professional fighters and it's been a really really awesome ride so far so what have you what's what have you been going on uh, what's been going on with the boxers and, and with the with the football players what do you guys do you follow them around in their camps as well uh, uh how, how to explain to us what, what what's going on now with breakout media with them yeah, yeah. So it's it's so. First of all, I've always been super intrigued by the athletes. I think that they have the power to influence, and unlike any other time in history today, they can make uh, in complete control of their careers like never before. You know what I mean? I like to see our fighters follow what's known as the modern day athlete footprint. And know uh, what is a modern day athlete? Well, to me, um, and according to my friend Blake Lawrence, who also picked up the award at the Synopsis for uh, best digital exec, prior to the social media era you had to walk away from the fans you once knew and the audiences you become so used to you know what i mean but a modern day athlete today someone who understands that they live in an era where you have the potential to build and keep your audiences long after you retire from the sport and especially in a sport like boxing bro like fighters need to understand that one hit can change your life so it's important to learn the art of audience acquisition uh, from the jump and that's what my team helps these athletes do so you, what do you, so you guys have like uh, classes, coaching, uh, do you do uh, coaching or social media? Well, what is break, break specifically, what are we really? We're just, an, you know, undeniable force in the sport. We create series for athletes based on interests and hobbies, get sponsors to pay the tab, and then turn fighters into online superstars just like that. Uh, so before they even become world champion or long after they've left the sport, my team and I work around the clock and ensuring that each one of our athletes feels like a celebrity. So there's no like membership fee, there's no cost to join our program. The results speak for themselves. And the fans are hungry for this type of content, bro. Like there's no secret why All Access did so well and became Emmy nominated, but there's just so much more room to grow and fans want to see you know, fans want to see Deontay Wilder skydive with fucking Kevin Hart on his new YouTube channel. They want to see athlete crossover to into different sport genres and create content with other athletes. So they want to be entertained. They want to be invested. Just give them the avenue is what we said. Hey, Jay, uh, this is Seth. How are you, buddy? What's going on, bro? Hey, um, do you only work with al- athletes or do you work with other people? Because, like, we got Pete here. Yeah, actually. I need an we agent. Want- Okay. Yeah, we want we want to build Pete up, you know, get his, you know, build his presence and you know make him the star that you know he thinks he should be. I think Pete already is a superstar, my dude. I was looking at I was looking to venture off into modeling, Jay. Yeah, my dude, get right in there. I can see you on the front page of the new Kelvin Klein ad, right next, right next to Justin Bieber. That's what I'm talking. That's about. That's what I'm saying. I need, an, I need an agent like this in my life. Yeah, Jay, I'm letting you know that you got you're responsible. If he starts put, putting underwear pictures on his Instagram. You are now. Re- <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean the modeling and acting agency. It's like a similar agency. You know what I mean? And like unlike any other sp- uh, main team sport, like you know NFL, NHL, NBA, they all have these accredited agencies, and boxing doesn't have it. You know what I mean? Because they're just a bunch of sanctioning bodies making fights happening, and the promoters just decide what's best for the fighter at the time. And the fighter's left in the middle, man. Doesn't know what the fuck to do. 
do you know what i mean jay i think i feel like boxing most of the time the promoter is mainly just a booking agent you know he just books fights yeah he's a fighter and he's not really a promoter i feel like a promoter is such an an, an overuse of the word promoter that it's over it's over crediting what yeah they actually do because most of the time i mean aside from one or two companies in in the sport they don't actually promote the fighters at all at all like mm. book their fights and then uh they book book a couple of press conferences uh with and most of the time the press conferences that are booked or, or you know your pr company is is blasting out uh email blasts to all boxing media so you're keeping everything in-house anyway now right. nobody's actually finding out about who your fighter is let me ask you a question Polly. When, when you were coming up i mean i know you're really really engaged with your fans now through social media but prior to the social media age how did you get your name across um well i had to mainly do it by myself because i had one of these guys that was booking it basically a booking agent too you know yeah i figured i looked at the the what guys like uh prince asim hamed used to do you know muhammad ali mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. said, you know, be not as obnoxious as possible. You know, let let if you bang on the door, eventually somebody's gonna answer the door. You know what I'm saying? And exactly. Let me just be obnoxious as possible because at the time that would just be, you know, that was just the easiest way to find out. If I, I felt like I saw uh, at the time I was coming up the ladder, it was Sugar Shane Mosley was number one pound for pound, and he was just too nice yeah. of a guy. And so I felt like, you know what? If I'm, I can be a nice person. I mean, I, I think I think everybody's good and bad in their own way. But I said, you know what? I, I can also be this very obnoxious person. My personality can be very loud when I when I when I when I turn things on, you know. And so I figured, you know what? Let me let me be as obnoxious as possible because if I'm as obnoxious as possible, people will remember me. Maybe they won't remember me in a positive yeah. way. Maybe I'll be booed most of my career, but they will they will remember me. That's interesting. I still can't regret it because uh, especially at that time, I wasn't being promoted very much. Promote it's more a uh, booking agent, and it's fine. You know, they, they if they call themselves booking agents, then it's fine because you know they do you do make your money getting your fights booked and if you don't have a guy who's booking your fights well you know you're not able to make maximize your potential to make money like you said part of the social media age you have to just you know keep knocking until somebody answers and before social media promoters and managers would just hear through their circle about that kid in the gym who's making a lot of noise and he's knocking out guys and sparring or whatever you guys got to come down and see this kid but now that door has become social media and that kid who's been making a lot of noise is coming from his fucking Instagram or Twitter accounts so it's important to understand that this level of content distributed correctly in front of the right eyes of the decision makers can change your career drastically and that's what happened like in a simple case like Phil Greco and who's and kind of like the athletes I'm working with now. That, that's a great example of the modern promotion right there you know how Phil Greco was able to get the Amir Khan fight and, and uh, Jay you were uh, you were one of the masterminds behind that. And you know what, it's, it, the blueprint's already there, right, Polly? Like, guys like The Rock, Will Smith, Odell Beckham Jr., Kevin Durant, they're all joining platforms like YouTube and IGTV. Too. Even Adrian Brown, <laughs> like him or hate him. I mean, he knows how to get, he knows how to get your, have that gra attention-grabbing persona on social media and then it keeps people talking yeah but the only thing about Adrian Broner and I said this in the past is I think that he's not using the platforms correctly or healthily you know what I mean because um, you know it takes a couple of more losses and that's it the fans will forget about Adrian Broner if he were to actually invest the money that he's spending at the strip clubs and on the cars and in the casinos and actually invest it into like um, you know like a proper quote unquote producer like myself or my kind of agency who, who can actually take his career and kind of engage him with the fans that are actually gonna fuck with him, then he'll have a way better like lasting career because this 14 to 21 year old demographic are the same kids who are gonna grow up, come to your fights and buy your future merchandise. So you gotta learn to play in their playground, you know what I mean? Like this is their playground that we're on. We gotta get more fighters on MTV. The MTV generation are the, are the young guys, and, the, and all the young and, and and the young generation. Those are the ones you want to get attention to the the athletic career, the fighting career. Yeah, Seth and I were talking just a couple of days ago with um, uh, uh, Seth Prop, Jamo, Charlo, and the twins there, and it's like you know they have extreme credibility. Like they can, I can totally see them on like in a on a really cool independent series where it's two twins just walking around town just talking to people in their communities, you know what I mean? So what I want to talk about is more about the pay-per-view model because even that itself is based on two streams, domestic and corporate, right? And the corporate buys make up the chunk of the viewership because here you have bars and restaurants buying the pay-per-view based on the max capacity. So just because XYZ Barn Wings might have purchased the pay-per-view for their max capacity, how many do you think were actually there to watch the fighter? You know what I mean? And that's something that always interests me because I'm like, you can walk into any bar on fight night, ask 80 out of 100 people, they won't even know what they're there for. They won't know who's fighting. So my thing was, 
the future is becoming so much more data driven. And so people like Jamo Chalo should be looking into having their own platform to share their own content because in the future, all the brands are going to be seeing more value in that for sure. Yeah, and, that, and that's the power of technology in general. You know, you, you, you're able to be seen more consistently, more constantly. So you and you do that You do that very well on yourself, you know what I mean? You're self-taught. I mean, you, anybody who looks, takes a look at your social media would think that this guy has somebody else writing his content for him, but that's all you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, it's all me. <laughs> but sometimes it's, uh, <laughs> sometimes it's, a, little, it's a little bit... Uh, that maybe uh, Peter does that for you. Peter. Jay, I'm busy it. running my own, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I thought maybe you... Uh, you're pretty witty on your Twitter, man. I thought maybe you had a few punchlines for Polly from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Peter's got his own punchlines. No, he's hilarious on Twitter, man, yeah. So, Jay, what's uh, what's what's coming up in the future, then? You, uh, you have any, any particular athlete in mind? Yeah, yeah, so right now we're working with... Um, I mean, we're, we're primarily focusing on boxing, for sure. I wish to work with more athletes more and more. Um, but right now we're working on a really cool project with uh, Vayner Sports, which is owned by Gary Vaynerchuk and his brother, AJ. Um, they're like rock stars in the world. And um, I'm working with one of their athletes, Josh Morton, who's a linebacker for the Saints on his series called Making America. Um, it's scheduled to premiere this summer, and that's going to be just another one of our prime examples of what happens when you put athletes in the spotlight. And it's a really cool series, and I wish to continue doing that. Obviously, with your support and the boys over at Showtime, I wish to continue um, engaging with you guys as well. But um, this year is the year I think that athletes should really start focusing on putting the stock back into the fans because these are the guys who are going to dictate your career. Yeah, you definitely, know? man. Definitely. You have to, and fan engagement is, is very, very important in this day and age. Obviously, we talked about with social media and whatnot. And uh, your company, Break Media, uh, is one company that uh, uh, specializes in this. So uh, we'll give you uh, we'll give lots of luck in, in the future when we, we look forward to seeing you know, a lot more of your projects and uh, a lot more of the of the athletes that you work with and seeing them uh, break out into, uh, into stars in the next generation. Yeah, man, for sure. Thanks a lot, boys. Appreciate it. All right, bro. Take care. Take care, yeah, man. All right, brother. That's a wrap, bro.